，恩特。啊。As you know, I love paprika. I love paprika so much so、uh, that I had this tweet saying, Barry, this recipe sounds right up your street. I know how much you like chicken. Thank you, Jennifer Crenshaw. I do like chicken, but I do love paprika more. Love paprika. Love it. I love the tanginess to it, the smoked paprika, the smokiness that it brings. Just oh, yeah. It feels like it's a spice that does something, you know? Because some of them are just like meh. So hopefully you get the idea. I just I love paprika. I absolutely. It's just oh my god. So today、uh, I got sent this request, and I love the fact、uh, that this is by a chef called Alton Brown, who I absolutely love. When people ask me who is my favourite chef,、uh, to be honest, right now he's probably my favourite one. And when I saw this, I'm like, well, if Alton's done it, and I had a little look at the recipe, it looks the phenomenal. But there's also like a kind of clever hack with the juices and the fats and the chicken that sort of amalgamate. Is that the word? At the bottom with potatoes and onions, so it's kind of like. A one-pot dish that's not a dish that just gets baked, and it's like it's got paprika in it. <sighs> Look, the best thing I ever made. Chicken with smoked paprika. This is my. This is Alton. Look, 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 there he is. Alton and I, we tend to have a little bit of history. Whenever I tend to say that I like Alton Brown, people are like, "No, he would hate you because he doesn't really like kitchen gadgets." Is that right? He says that they're multitaskers. Now I looked in that video, and you can sneakily see. Well, actually. At one point, he uses scissors to open up the chicken. That I personally love using scissors as well. I've actually said in the past it's one of my favourite gadgets to use. I know it's not normally a gadget. You have kitchen scissors, but normally a chef would use a knife. And also, in a minute, he does this bit where he juliennes potatoes, and I'm going to just try and find the how's it there. Look, 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 look. He is doing it with a gadget glove, one of those anti-cut gloves. Luckily, I have both those things, and it's my own. The first thing we're going to do is make the paprika marinade thing. Nice. Yep. So we make this marinade. I'm going to get a massive big bowl, way bigger than I need, but it's going to be good for my chicken in a bit. So one, two, three in a bit. Big old tablespoons, apparently. Now this is cool because we turn it into a paste now, and this is something I tend to do when I make some like homemade curries normally. So any herbs and spices, you just add a teeny bit of oil like this, about a tablespoon. It needs some salt and pepper. Thanks, guys. Sit. I'm just going to mix that together, and it should clump and form that sort of paste. Oh, it smells so good! Yes, but we'll shake this all up with our chicken, which we're going to do with our scissors. Right, chicken, and as I get the chicken out, as standard, you're going to join us. So these are chicken thighs, which are so good. I love the sort of meatiness. But these have got the skin on and the bone in, so the skin's going to crisp up gorgeously. But the, I don't understand why Alton's done this because normally when you cook something with the bone in, that tends to release more flavour, as far as I know. So why do we buy them only to take the bone out? I, I don't know. Maybe you can't buy skin on chicken thighs without bones in them. I didn't see them in the supermarket. That's my only thinking. So if you think you know the answer, let me know down below. Okay. So what Alton says to do is to take out the bone, so you're still left with one big old flat piece of chicken thigh. So that's worked, but I don't get why I didn't just buy boneless ones and just unravel them like that. Because that's what I tend to do. I buy them, unravel them, look like a carpet like that. We'll stick with it. Bones are out. That's 20 minutes of my life. I'm not going to get back, right, Boston? Yeah, he was there for emotional support, but it's done. They they look good. They look smooth and stuff. We're going to stick them in that bowl with the marinade. All right, so washed hands, and I'm just gonna literally push it round. Ah,、oh, look at that staining it. You want it all over it, nice and evenly in all the grooves. Make sure there's no lumps left, so it doesn't look like chicken anymore. It looks like it's been on holiday to Benidorm and had a little bit too much carrot oil put on him. All right, I'm just gonna leave that just to sit for a bit to marinate as it is、uh, on the side whilst we do other bits. Okay, so we need to get ourselves an onion. This is a, a yellow onion, which I believe is a little sweeter. Well, it was twice the price in the shop than all the other ones. Remember that tip I said the other day about treating it like the North Pole and the South Pole.、Uh, so if you want to just cut the onion thin, just aim for the poles. Da, 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 da. Chopped onions. 
Okay, I don't know if the uh, sweet ones are stronger, but I really want to cry right now. I should have done the hack where you stick your tongue out and hurt. Uh, ah, if only I had a foil lined baking tray that looks like something from NASA. Yeah. So this, along with the potatoes that will come to in a minute, will get all that flavor and fat and juices from that paprika chicken. I've never had a pimento uh, olive before. Green manzanilla olive stuffed with pimento paste in brine. Lovely. We all love brine, don't we? Uh, so there is some sort of paste in there. What is pimento paste? Shall I just break that up? Because obviously this, ooh, looks like a chili. We need to drain these out. There's a gadget for that, isn't there, Alton? Yes, there is. Look at that. We don't want the brine. Oh, randomly I had Cheerios for breakfast, folks. And I was craving chocolate cereal. I just tweeted this, craving Cocoa Pops. So I put some chocolate chips in with my honey Cheerios, just like a couple. Uh, yeah, conclusion, don't do that. It was disgusting. I mean, it's very sweet and they all sunk to the bottom. Nah. Drained weight is 200 grams. So I think we need about three quarters of these. And the thing I do like about olives is that they chop really, really easy. And I believe what we're making here is effectively a tapenade, which is sometimes done with anchovies or capers, I think. Just kind of like a pureed thing. Look, I'm the guy from the Roger Rabbit movie years ago. Look into my eyes. All right, I'm happy with that. There's still a few chunky bits, but Boston, could you literally get any closer? And I just Googled it and I didn't realize it, but a pimento is another name for a bell pepper. Okay, so in there apparently goes two teaspoons of lemon zest. I'm not sure how much two teaspoons is, but I'm gonna guess it's about the zest of one lemon. So we'll just go for that. I don't really have a gadget for getting lemon zest off. Obviously just a zester like this is perfect. Does the job. There we go. I would say that is about two teaspoons in there. And the cool thing I like to do sometimes with like lemons that I've zested, is stick them in my fruit bowl. Cause it kind of turns into the easiest air freshener ever. Lemon scent right now. Tangy. We're supposed to be zesting the garlic too, but oh no, it's time to show you something. This my friends is me. It's a veggie prep kit, even though it's got me making pasta on it. Uh, this is gonna be available on Amazon in US and UK very, very soon. It's not there just yet. It might be by the time you see this video. I've been testing over 20 different chopper things and gadgets to create this kit thing. I'm very proud of it. And in it comes some of the things you're about to see. Well, actually only about three or four things. There's about 15 different things in it. So my aim was to create like a kit that you could basically prep nearly every vegetable and some fruits that you could think of, like spiralizing it, chopping it and all that stuff. So one of the things in there is one of these garlic rocker tubes, which I absolutely love. You wouldn't believe how many of these I tested. So simple, but there are some terrible ones out there. But as you know, you just stick your garlic clove in like I just showed you. We'll do this one as well. And then it just peels it for you. See, nice and easy. It's also got the, look, it's Barry Lewis. Oh my gosh. Uh, the rocker, which this thing is probably my favorite thing of all time. Just chop that garlic up like that. And I love how it just picks it up, you know? So that's basically my version. Instead of zesting the garlic, we're just gonna use that and scrape it in. Cool. Uh, I think I might have broken it now. It's okay. You will not believe how many of these I've got in my garage and I've tested, but we'll come on to that on another video. This isn't the time. Um, but if you remember on the scene uh, in that video I just showed you with Alton, when he was slicing those potatoes on the mandolin thing, he had one of these anti-cut glove things. That's in the kit as well. I don't know if you remember, I, have, I probably like, what's that, six months ago I had a cut in my finger, it's really deep. I was testing these things. This is handy. There's a pun. We can go up and down like this. Look. So I've got to do that with 900 grams of potatoes. See you in a minute. Look at that. <laughs> now these potatoes aren't that starchy, uh, but I will give them a little wash anyway before sticking them with my onions. If only I had a NASA inspired baking tray with onions in it. Aha. But you can sort of see how that's the perfect platform for the chicken to sit on top of. Okay, so I've just got from my oven this uh, rack that normally obviously you put baking trays on and cook pizzas directly on, etc. So what Alton says to do is to get a cooling rack. So I have never put one of these in the oven before, but apparently we put this over the tray like that and the chicken gets cooked and those juices fall into it. Now this isn't quite big enough and it's going to rest and compress down. So what instead I'm going to do is I'm going to lay the rack on top of it like that because it's a bit more stable, a teeny bit more height and that will definitely not melt. I don't want to break another oven. 
Oh yeah, a little of an update, waiting for the parts. Apparently, oh, it's going to be one or two days, sir. I feel like that lady in Titanic. It's been 110 years. Oh my gosh, that smells so good. Look, smell the paprika, smell it. So what we've got here is the skin still on it and we're going to encourage, that's the key word here, uh, the skin uh, away. Come on, there's a lot of encouragement going on here. There you go. Wow, look at that. You see, you've got a whole pouch. So we're going to get that fill in and kind of load it in there. So again, the chicken's going to cook. You're going to get all those juices, but then you're going to get the flavors from in here as well. The garlic, the lemon and the olives with those peppers all going together into the potatoes and onions. We lift this on like so. And that, I believe, yeah, that's it. It's literally going to cook like that. Oh, I don't know. Because the wire rack's so wide, it could fall through. Maybe that's why you use a bait. Shall I go for it? I'm going to do it for Alton. In fact, I'm really going to go for it because I have got two wire racks. Mrs. Barry, if I break these, will probably kill me. Very happy. I'm just going to repeat that seven more times. That's all done. Uh, the big question is, will that fit in my oven? Width-wise, that is the maximum, but I think we might be okay with the depth of it. All right, so I've just preheated that oven to 190C or 170C fan. So take 20 degrees off for a fan oven, 375F or gas mark five. Nice. Please close. <sighs> right, that's it. We just cook it and then we eat it. Food. Whoa. Oh my gosh. Oh, that smell is incredible. Oh, I can see all the juices underneath. Oh, look at this. Oh, paprika, potatoes and onions. Oh my gosh. Almost caramelized. Ah, oh, I love the balance of the slightly softened ones and the charred potatoes. And there's of course the strands of onion in there as well. If you want it all crispy, just put it all on one layer. Or maybe I was thinking as it was cooking, perhaps I should have like shook it up, but I did not want to touch those trays. And I'm gonna place ah, ha, 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 two pieces of chicken on top. I'm gonna have to pan out, it's so high. Look at that. <laughs> oh my gosh. Yeah, maybe it looks too big like that. We'll keep it as the one. Incredible. Ah, come on. You see all the olives still inside there? Oh, hello, friend. Ah, oh, the smell is amazing. Right, I'm going for a bit with all of this on. I've got some skin there, the chicken, the olives, all that good stuff. Onions, potatoes. Oh, remember, if you enjoyed this, don't forget to have a barathon now and check out the rest of the Barry Tries. And if you've got any suggestions, let me know down below. Ah. Mm. Oh. Yeah. Wow. The lemon is subtly powerful in there. There's such a fusion of like flavors. You've got the smokiness, the paprika, that z z zesty bite. But then the olives are just bringing a little bit of saltiness to it. And there's a smoothness of the potatoes and the onions and the chard in there. And the flavors, the smokiness. That is phenomenal. That is actually sensational. And to be honest, minimal prep, all in the oven like that. And it's all done. My wife is going to love me because we've got dinner for the whole family for the rest of the week, along with some pasta. And that's it. The chicken on its own. Oh. Crispy skin, so tender. Mmm. Can you say thank you, Alton? Say thank you. Nice one. Good recipe, Alton Brown. Nice one. Take your level player. No matter what your style, the kitchen's for me. Simon's mustache, goatee, maybe all three. 